All right, welcome back to my channel, everyone. It's Ren here, and today I'm going to show you how to edit your cosplay photos using the app ToolWiz. So we're just gonna jump right in and go over to ToolWiz. So we're gonna use Pro Editing for this one, and um, select our cosplay photo. Today we're gonna choose from one of the Oikawa cosplay photos that I have here. Let's go with this one. That's how you choose a photo, but you can also go over here actually. You can go over to your photos or to your gallery and look for the photo that you need to edit. I'm going to pick that and I'm going to send it to ToolWiz. So I'm just showing you the two ways that you can pick your photo. So the first one was to go to ToolWiz and then to look for your photo, you scroll through all of your photos. Or you can just go to your photo directly and then send it to ToolWiz. I find that the latter works better for me because it's easier, it's faster as well, and I don't have to scroll through so many photos to just get the one that I need to edit. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the composition of the photo, the position of the subject, the other elements in here, that needs fixing. So the first thing that we're gonna fix is the composition and the shapes. So right here, I think that the subject, or me rather, <laughs> the cosplayer, is a little too much on the left side and I want it to be a little bit in the center. So we're gonna go over to crop and then we're gonna just go over here. And as you can see, there's the hand is kind of peeking through here at the corner. So we're gonna get rid of that. See these two vertical lines over here? And these two horizontal lines? These are, um, this is called the grid. And usually what you want is um, either the subject is in the center or in either of the places where the lines intersect. So that's ideal, but you can always be creative and do whatever you want but but for this one i'm just gonna place my subject on the the places where the lines are intersecting here on the left side so i think that's pretty good i have an issue with the ball over here it's a little too low for me i want it to be higher or i want it to show up more in the photo so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Go over to the blending mixer and go over to the photos and look for that exact same photo. So um, here we're going to go over to mask and we're going to erase the rest of the photo except for the ball. Take note that this is the exact same photo that I'm using. Okay, before we refine that, let's just adjust it. Let's put it over here. I want the ball to be bigger. So kind of like kind of like that. So that's before and this is after. So we have more of the ball showing up now. So this is just an example. I'm just showing you how to use the overlay because I use all the oops. You know, there are some things in the photo that I don't want to see or I want to kind of cover up. This is overall a really useful tool and it wouldn't hurt to use it. So over here, we're just going to refine, just going to erase and then apply. Just be really careful with the application and how you erase the things. Or you can also go to configure and change the size of the brush. So that over there, that's not perfect, but um, it's definitely okay for now. All right, I'm gonna hit the check button. So over there, I moved the ball. As you can see, that's before and this is after. I kind of wanted the ball to be a bit more visible, a bit bigger in the picture. What else? Um, okay, here. As you can see, my chest area is kind of bloated. It actually has that bloating effect because when I was taking this photo, the electric fan was facing 
in front of me below so it was kind of creating air bubbles or air pockets inside my shirt giving me that bloated effect as you can see that doesn't look natural at all it's actually an air bubble over there caused by the electric fan but nobody's gonna know that and when other people look at this photo they're just gonna think that your chest looks weird so because of that we're going to go over to tools and we're gonna use the reshape option over here and let's go over to settings we don't want the size to be 100 because that's really big so we're just gonna reduce that to about 40 and then the intensity to about 35 or 34 we're gonna use extrusion for this one and we're going to drag in this bloated area right here take note that oikawa is a guy so we really should make him look like a guy or make the cosplayer look like a guy as well i know that it's a bit controversial to edit your photos like this but you know you're wearing makeup you're wearing a costume might as well do it properly in the post-production you know editing really is just enhancing the photo it's it becomes bad when you really you know change the features of the person so we're just gonna restore that if you change the features to make it look really obvious here we're just you know fixing some details some things to make the photo look a bit better we're just shrinking it shrinking all right so as you can see this curve over here it doesn't look destructive it doesn't look weird but we're just going to kind of straighten it a little bit oh and you also should be careful when using the reshape option especially when there's a pattern behind or where if there are lines obvious lines because um like for example here in the hair if i use reshape all the strands are going to be dragged in as well and we don't want that at all because it's so obvious that it's edited because all the other strands are also dragged out this is a common mistake that beginners do so you really have to be careful when using reshape you have to make sure that it's not obvious all right so i'm pretty satisfied with that so let's hit the check button now we're going to fix the face there are a few blemishes and spots on my face so we're gonna fix that over here at portrait just go over to the blemish area and then zoom in on the face and this is really important choose the smallest brush size just press one dot on each blemish that you want to fix you don't want to get rid of your pores and just go over to the biggest size and just press all over no you don't want that because it looks really fake we don't want we want it to look natural but clean at the same time so we're just gonna restore that what we did over there I'm just gonna restore it and we're gonna go over it again As much as possible, you don't want it to be obvious. So there, that's pretty good. And as you can see, I only used a little bit. The pores are still there. We want the pores to actually be seen because it's an indication that that the skin is real. You know, the pores are what make the skin real. So we're just going to keep it there. But at the same time, it looks cleaner now. So that's that's really good. We're just going to hit the check button. So the next thing that we're going to do in this photo is we're going to patch up this area over here. The area of the forehead is really weird. It's too high. Like the hair is not just it's just not right here. I want the hair to be a bit longer over here, kind of like that to make it look more like Waikawa. So we're going to do that using the patch tool. Let's go over to tools and let's go over to patch in Photoshop patch is called i think the cloning brush tool correct me if i'm mistaken but yeah what it does is it takes a part of the photo and then copies it into the other so that's what it does so for this one i want a little bit of this 
over here. I want I want it to extend just a little bit. And then we're gonna lessen the feathering to make it look more natural. Alright, so I'm pretty okay with that. Okay, so as you can see now it the forehead is still a little bit big, but I just showed you how to patch it up and that's what's important over there. That's the difference. So you can do this multiple times, but I would advise against it because the more you do it, the more unnatural it will look and we really don't want that. The point of this whole thing that we're editing, the cosplay photo, is that we want to resemble the character as much as we can. We're not going to destroy the characteristics of your face or of the body or of the cosplayer. So after we're done with the composition and the shapes, we're going to take care of the colors and the brightness. So let's go over to toning and let's go over to brightness. I'm actually pretty okay with this, but I'm just showing you like your options here like if you want to brighten your photo or if you want to darken it so over here let's just um brighten it to four and now we're going to go to selective coloring selective coloring lets you alter the values and hues of a specific color in the photo i use this all the time to correct the colors in the photo as well as to enhance my skin color since the walls of my room are painted yellow my photos tend to have a yellowish tint when the light reflects off my wall so the first thing that I do is to reduce the yellows. Second, I enhance the color of my skin by adjusting the reds and the yellows. Here, I reduce both the yellows and the blacks as well as the cyan. I only apply this to the face using the masking option. Usually that does it, but for this one, since the color of the jacket doesn't really match Alba Josai's jacket color, I also adjust the colors cyan and blue. I reduce the magenta and blacks to make it lighter and to give it that teal color. I also push the science of both colors. Take note that I separated the yellow reduction, skin correcting, and jacket coloring because if I make a mistake this way, it's easier to undo it without affecting all the other selective coloring layers that I've done. Now we're going to go over to enhance and we're going to brush over some parts that we want to either lighten which is dodge darken which is burn and we can also use a sponge which is to saturate or to desaturate parts of the photo so for this one we're going to use dodge i'm just showing you you don't actually have to use this every time i'm just showing you how to use it we're just going to lessen the size a bit and go over to highlights because i want to lighten or to emphasize the highlights of the hair I want the hair to have more dimension. We're also going to go over with the nose. You can also use this for under eyes and some other parts that you really want to like lighten in this photo. You don't want to go overboard with this. So I'm just showing you what you can do. So as you can see, my face looks really bright. So we're just going to lessen the intensity of that. So now we're going to go over to the curve. And just to explain to you quickly how the curve works, the one here at the bottom, the bottom left, is for the darker parts of the photo. So if you push it up, all the darker parts of the photo will become lighter, as you can see. Over here at the top right, this is for the lighter parts of the photo. So if you push it down, all the lighter parts of the photo will become darker. As you can see, the white background kind of became grayish brown. That's just how the curve works, basically. So what we're going to do with the curve is um, we're going to go over to the blues. And we're just going to push it a little bit higher over there. We, we basically want more blues in the lighter parts of the photo. And then we're going to go over to reds, to the reds. And we're going to reduce that a little bit to add more cyan to the photo. Just a disclaimer, I am not an expert in using curves. I just know how it works basically, but I don't use it that often. I only use it for um, what I'm using tool with, but I usually do my color correcting in Photoshop Express. There are also some other options here that you can use. You can use a color balance 
where you can change different parts of the photo. You can also go to channel mixer. So many other options in here, you just have to explore them. You can also go to temperature right away and then choose the temperature that you want. If you want it to be um, cooler, if you want it to be warmer, but I'm quite happy with this one. And now we're going to go over to natural saturation and just saturate the photo a bit. For the saturation, you can also go to HSL. They also have these automatic saturation options over here, but I'm good with this one. And we're gonna go to highlight and shadow. So I want more shadows in this photo. Okay, and I want to push the midtones as well. And the highlights may be a bit less. So this is how I edit my cosplay photos. It's not the same for everyone. You can do whatever you want, but this is just how I do it. Compared to the most recent edit, which is this one, we're gonna go over to the original one and we can clearly see that the one that we edited is a lot better. It's better for social media. <laughs> it's better for your character as well. You can do a lot more than what I just showed you. You just need to explore tools. There are so many things that you can use here. So you have the tools, the basic tools, the toning for, um, you know, for the lights, for the colors and the filters. If you want, you know, quick fix portrait for your face, most especially some effects, decorate text, photography. Here you can use depth of field, blur, aperture, light leaks, etc. We used the brush in Enhance a while ago. You can also use Brighten, Sharpen, Clarify, Defog, etc. And we have art as well, but we're not going to use art that much when it comes to cosplay editing. Also, you have to keep in mind that ToolWiz does not have an undo or redo button. So what I usually do is I go over here at the clock sign. If I want to undo my most recent move, I just go go over here to the previous action and then you can do whatever you want. And it will just disregard this one on top. So if you understand how to use layers and you'll understand how this works as well. And if you haven't already, please check out the previous video prior to this one. It kind of shows all the other apps that I'm going to use and some just some basic foundational tips and tricks here and there. So for the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to use Photoshop Express for your cosplay photos. This is personally one of the easiest ways to go about editing your photos. It's not as confusing as ToolWiz. It's not as hard. It's definitely a lot simpler. I hope that you learned a lot in this video. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, as well as to leave a comment down below. What do you usually do when you edit your cosplay photos? And see you in the next video. Bye.